In this video, you will hear Neville Goddard speak about very interesting topic. This topic is probably the most famous topic in the manifestation community, which is how to manifest money using the law of attraction. Everyone wishes they could accumulate more wealth, make more money, and live a more prosperous life if given the chance. Many people, however, have a strained relationship with money. They struggle to attract money and prosperity into their lives, and as a result, they never achieve the financial success they seek. The truth is that financial success begins in the head, and the number one barrier for many people is their belief system about wealth and money. With that in mind, leveraging the law of attraction is one of the most effective ways to change your beliefs about money into a belief system that will open you up to the prosperity that is all around you. But first, you must take some steps to really see it work to change your life. You must discover and change your limiting beliefs about money in order to activate the law of attraction in your life. We've developed limiting views about money that we've internalized and accepted as true throughout our lives, dating back to childhood. You've probably heard of these limiting beliefs before. Money does not grow on trees and is hence incredibly difficult to obtain, or the notion that money cannot buy happiness, or the restrictive view that you cannot be rich and a nice person at the same time. Before you can start using the law of attraction, you must first recognize and resolve any limiting ideas you may have about money. Once you see money for what it really is, an accessible, unlimited supply of a resource you can use in any way that you desire, it's much easier to form the habits and mindset necessary to acquire wealth. One great way to address any limiting beliefs about money is through the use of positive affirmations. For example, if you realize that you view money as something that is scarce and difficult to acquire, you could use a positive affirmation such as, I'm a money magnet. Everything I touch turns to gold. Other positive affirmations you can use are, I am releasing any and all negative thoughts and emotions about money, and am happy and free to visualize my dreams. Or, I am creating all the money I want and need to accomplish everything I want to do in life. Try the affirmation, I am making positive choices about what to do with my money, and enjoying the energy of abundance that it reflects. Now let's hear Neville in his own words, and before moving on, please remember to subscribe to our channel and listen carefully while you are watching the video. Enjoy. Money has an odor. It's unlike any odor in the world. It's more fragrant to the miser than the most marvelous perfume in the world. He can tell it. You put a money bag to his face, and it's like putting roses to mine. He loves it. He can smell money. He can feel it. Money has a distinct feel about it. Put a $20 bill in your hand and ask you to feel it, and then put another piece of paper in your hand and you can tell the difference. There's a difference. It is an odor to it. All this is part of the inner man that all things are possible to him. Try it. Before you condemn it, try it. And if you have the evidence to support my claim, well, then it doesn't matter what the world will tell you. If he laughs at you, so what? So they laughed at everyone who had an idea that seemed a little bit off-center. Always laughed at him. The laughter of the idea of going to the moon. Well, now it's a, an accomplished fact. There are still those who won't believe it happened, you know, because they don't want to believe that it ever happened. There are those who said you couldn't go down and actually live underwater. Now we have a submarine. There are still those who won't believe it. You can present them with all the facts in the world, and they won't believe it. So I tell you, you try it first, and if it proves itself in performance, it doesn't really matter what the whole vast world thinks. Go about your father's business, which is yourself, and then live a full and wonderful life in this world of Caesar. And the day will come, you will actually depart this world. I mean this age. Because those who are departing it now, unless they are awakened, they still find themselves in a world just like this. But those who have awakened, who have experienced the second birth, the birth from above, find themselves in an entirely different age where they're all imagination, and they are perfect. And wherever they go, everything is perfect. They don't have to raise a finger to make anything perfect, because they're perfect. All things must conform to them, for they're perfect. That's heaven. So heaven is not an area, it's not a realm, it's a body. And when that body is awakened within you, which is the wonderful human imagination, completely awake, then wherever you go clothed in that body that is completely awake, everything is perfect. If you found yourself in a forest of dead trees that all burst into foliage, in the desert they would all bloom like the rose, because you are there. No blind man, deaf man, no handicapped man could stand in your presence. You would be instantly transformed. 
into a perfect man because you are perfect. That's heaven. It's harmony. So it's not a place where you're going to go, pearly streets and all that nonsense. No. It's just simply you in a world that is perfect because you are perfect. And the day will come, you will awaken that body for it's in you now. That body is in you, but it's sound asleep. And one day, you will experience the resurrection. And you'll know the mystery of the resurrection. When you rise, and you rise within yourself, for the grave in which Christ is buried, because the Lord is buried, is your own skull. That's where he's buried. And in that tomb, where he is buried one day, he will awake, and he will come out of that tomb. And it's you who comes out of the tomb. And you'll know who you are. He is buried in every child in the world. This universal being. And yet one. Billions of us and yet it's only one Lord. And that one Lord in his fullness is buried in you. Individually. And when you awaken, you are he. So tonight take a go. Make it a lovely go. Either for yourself or for another. Any time that you exercise your imagination lovingly on behalf of another, you're mediating God to that error. So, bring a friend before your mind's eye. Represent him to yourself as the man or the woman that you would like them to be. And don't tell them, ask for no praise, just assume that they're talking to you and telling you the most marvelous news about themselves. And you congratulate them on that good news. And go your own way. Believe in the reality of that imaginal act. It may happen tomorrow. It may happen the day after. Or a week later. Or a month later. It has its own appointed hour. And it is ripening and it's going to flower. So don't be concerned. Leave it alone. And it will come to pass. So this is what I mean by feeling is the secret. I catch the mood, the feeling that would be mine if I were what I want to be. I don't have to touch something, I can if I want to, but it's the mood I'm speaking of. What would the feeling be like if she were well, if she were this, and then you catch it, just as though it is true. You always go to the end, and the end is where you begin. You're always imagining ahead of our evidence. So go to the end, and feel the end, and then dwell in that end, even though reason denies it and your senses deny it. You turn your back upon the doubters. That is your senses and what reason dictates. That's the hell or the devil or Satan in the world. That's the doubter. So you turn your back upon it. And then you walk as though things were as you want them to be. And living in that assumption, it slowly hardens into fact. Even though at the moment of the assumption it was denied by reason, an assumption, though false, if persisted in, will harden into fact. So you learn to assume and learn to persist in the assumption, and it will come to pass. Well, to answer your question, I must just go back and explain it to those who are here for the first time. No, 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 no. I make the statement based upon my own experience that nothing dies. And that's not only true of man. Is true of the flowers, of the animal world, of the trees, of everything. Nothing dies. I am the God of the living, not of the dead. So nothing dies. The little flower that blooms once, blooms forever. It's renewed by the seed of contemplative thought. With God, all things are possible. I don't think you'd be here if you did not believe in God. And the God to whom all things are possible. But maybe we stop right there and we separate man from God. And my purpose is to show you that we are not two, that we are one. That God actually became man, that man may become God. So let us now tonight give you my reasons for my claims. Return to the book of John, the Gospel of John. And we are told that the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. Well, that's a mistranslation. The word translated among is the Greek preposition in, 
within. The Word became flesh and dwelt within us, in us. John used the plural us for the nature whereof we consist. That the Word of God, which is defined in Scripture as the creative power of God and the wisdom of God, did not take upon itself some one person among men. For then that one assumed would have advanced and no more. But Christ to save all did not make this man or that man his habitation, but dwelt in us. That same creative word that created the universe and sustains it dwells in us. Therefore with God all things are possible, and therefore with man all things are possible. So he states it in one book, Matthew, with God all things are possible. But in Mark he states it, all things are possible to him, meaning man, who believes. Can man believe? So this creative word is in us. Well, what is this creative word? It's your own wonderful human imagination. That's Christ in man. Man is all imagination. And God is man. And exists in us and we in him. The eternal body of man is the imagination. And that is Christ himself. The divine body, Jesus. We are his members. So when you say, I am, that's he. Now, can you believe that you are now the man that you would like to be, though at the moment of your assumption, reason denies it, and your senses deny it? Only just started. So if you're right, can you really conceive a scene, a scene which, if true, would imply the fulfillment of your dream. Just imagine it. Certainly you can imagine it. But the problem is, would you believe it? Would you believe in the reality of the thing imagined? If I can this very moment imagine myself into a state, any state at all, and dwell in it. Well, now what is dwelling in it? Well, I am dwelling in it. Well, that's Christ. And that is the resurrecting power of the universe. So if I remain in a state, I will resurrect it and objectify it in my world. But I have to select it and enter the state. If the spectator could enter into any of these states in his imagination, approaching the state on the fiery chariot of his contemplative thought, what would it be like if it were true? How would I feel if I were now the man that I would like to be? How would I know that I could become it? Well, I first, as I assume that I am it, let me think of my friends. Those who really would rejoice with me were it true. Let me imagine that I am seeing them in my mind's eye. How do they see me? If what I am assuming is true, they should see me as I am seeing myself. And if they are friends, they should rejoice with me. So let me now assume that I am seeing, reflected on the face of a friend, that which, if I saw it, would imply he sees in me that which I have assumed that I am. Will that work? Try it. I tell you from my own personal experience, it works. I hope you enjoyed this part with Neville's voice. As we listen, it's all about imagination and feelings. We can easily change everything in our lives just by changing only how we think and what we think about. I know it's not that easy, but it's doable. It takes practice and some effort from your side. Some people do it faster than others, but you will eventually get there no matter how much time it takes you to change your beliefs towards life. And as we just learned, we must only stick to the positive thoughts and ideas and try to block any negative thought that we might have in our head. See you in the next video.